we'll discuss about each and every layer uh, uh, more, more, but more important here to see that as a whole Android comes as a whole stack. This is all Android. And uh, so I'll, I'll go further. Linux kernel. So all the memory management, thread management, power management, uh, network management, it happens through the Linux and Android. And, and this, like as I said, this provides the abstraction uh, for between the hardware and the software. Uh, let's discuss a little bit about these libraries. Uh, if you see there, uh, these libraries are written in C, C++, and they provide an interface for you to access these many services. Uh, let's touch upon some of the services here. The Surface Manager. The Surface Manager is responsible to, uh, to drawing anything and everything on your screen. So whatever you see on the screen, Surface Manager is the one which is responsible to manage it, the, the, the drawing part. And the Media Framework. It is responsible for all playing and recording your audio, video thing. Uh, further down, you see OpenGL and SGL. These are the graphics rendering engines. So Android has implemented this. They are open source. OpenGL is for 3D. SGL is for 2D graphics. FreeType is a similar font, special fonts. Uh, SSL, you know that. It's a secure uh, socket layer. SQLite. This is a database. Uh, uh, it's an open source again. SQLite, and it's a tiny database. Which, but you, it's is pretty good. Pretty good. You can do all the many operation of you know all basic operation of SQL as you do on a database on SQLite. Uh, WebKit is a browser. Is a browser engine. Is the same browser engine what is being used in Safari. So and uh, Android has. Tune is for the small devices. So pretty good stuff. LibC, the standard Lib, uh, C library for the C, C++ programmer. So if you are doing the native uh, app development, you would be using it. OK, this is, this is our area. You know? This is what you care about, Android runtime. So uh, you all know about Java runtime environment, right? So similarly, Java runtime, they have Android runtime environment. We have JRE, right? Similarly, if you see here, Dalvik virtual machine, this is the hard core, of, I mean, core of this runtime. And you might be interested to know why Dalvik virtual machine called Dalvik virtual machine. So, so Dalvik is uh, the name of a, of, a, of a fishing village in an in island. And, and I'm poor in pronouncing, so I will let you pronounce this. What is that? <laughs> so this island, so. Uh, and this name is given by Dan Bonstein, Bonstein and who, who the, the, the engineer who wrote the Dalvik virtual machine. Uh, so Dalvik virtual machine is something similar to the virtual machine, a Java virtual machine, but it does not deal with the dot class file. It deals with the dot dex file. So Dalvik virtual machine has specially, uh, specially tuned to run on a small uh, devices. And, and the way they have designed is that multiple instances of Dalvik virtual machine can run in a small phone. And the way they are able to achieve that efficiency of running multiple uh, virtual machine uh, in, and, and giving an absolutely rich user experience and f efficient uh, usage is by a process called <coughs> called <laughs> Zygote. So the Zygote, uh, uh, the guys, those who are doing already Android development, they would know what Zygote, Zygote does. It's pretty neat and, and pretty uh, good concept. What they do is, Zygote is a pre-warmed VM. So it is a kind of service where when your phone boots up, Zygote also comes up and preload all the common library, which Android thing that most of the application would be using. So before even any Java app started, you have a one process listening on a socket, having all the common APIs, the common classes warmed up. The moment user does something and Zygote comes to know that, OK, there's an application needs to be started. What it does is simple Linux fork. It does Linux fork, and you have entire VM. You, you are not 
You're wasting any time to loading those libraries. You have that ready, you start the activity, users see absolutely good, you know, very rich experience in terms of responsiveness. Uh, on the top of that is a core libraries. Those who come from the J2ME background, they would know, you remember those configurations, CLDC, CDC, and all those things? They all come from this. The core library gives you the basic classes, java.io, java.lang, java.util, your hash map. Everything comes into the core library. Uh, what else? Security. Uh, this is one of the most important thing, you know, I would say, uh, Android would have thought about when they are opening up market for, for, for any developer to write any kind of application at any level. And those who have developed the BlackBerry, there are still a lot many constraints to reach to the, to write the app, which really, really interact with each and every part of the device. The way they could achieve the security, they use this multi-user security model of Linux. So they use, uh, you know, that Linux kernel. Multi-user meaning, you all know that Linux is pretty good in keeping the separation between the users. So user A logs in, user B logs in, they don't know about each other, they don't share their space, unless it's explicitly given, right? Now, you might be thinking like, you know, in a phone, how many users is going to log in, right? What they do, they know that only one user will be logging in, but for them, every application in Android is a new user. So every application, when any application comes into the Android phone, it runs as a separate user. I'll show you that if you, if you access your phone and do top or you do alas, you will see that, uh, you do ps, you will see that the process which is running under the different user ID. And that user ID is assigned by the Android system. Application has no clue what this user ID is. So we don't, we as a Java developer do not have access, is a headache of Android operating system, uh, Linux operating system which takes care. Okay, this is the part which we will be discussing most. Uh, activity manager, window manager, content provider. So, Andrew touched upon your know, many part of, of the application if you have seen that. And I, I'll just give you a brief about this application framework and as we go in more in detail about developing an application, I'll try to correlate them with that at the time. Activity manager is the is a process, a component which which manage the life cycle of application. Which activity or which application to bring in the forward, which one to take in the in the background process, which one to kill, which one to bring it up again, all that happens through the activity manager. Then you have a window manager. Window manager makes sure that it is actually a kind of abstraction on the surface manager, what I explained to you in, into NDK. Basically, it, it, it decides that how to draw and, and how it look. All, all responsibility of a screen goes to the Windows Manager. Anything, whatever you need to display, goes through Windows Manager. <laughs> Similarly, a view system. View system actually is different from the Window Manager, but it's responsible to drawing a different views. And when I say views, Views meaning different buttons, different lists, the map he showed, and the list he showed. So most of those things are handled by the view system. Package manager, this is a very important thing. Uh, package manager makes sure that it, it is possible to handle all the application which comes to, come, which install to your, to, your, to your phone, whether it's through over the year or it's through, through other way like USB or anything else. Package manager keep the track that what application you have installed. The so same application comes with the OTA, which is over the year, or same application comes again with the, with the USB, it'll make sure that you don't have to copy of that. And also make sure that the application, what you're installing on the phone, is good. When I say good, meaning you don't have phone one not, with support 1.6 SDK, and you're trying to push the application which needs 2.2, even that. So that's, that's what the package manager does. Telephony manager is responsible for all the phone related functionality. Uh, resource manager, anything outside of the code is taken care of by the resource manager. Your images, your external strings and all that. Location manager, again responsible as the name suggests. For the location, it will tell you where the user is in whatever method is available. If GPS is on, it will tell through GPS, this is the lat long. 
if it is a tower triangulation mechanism, it'll tell you through that or Wi-Fi ID or whatsoever. 